Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at proteins. Now proteins are made from amino acids. They are lots of amino acids joined together to form a polymer chain, which is what we call a protein. Um, and in this video we're going to look at the three uh, types of protein structure that you need to know for chemistry. And um, There are more than three, but you only need to know three for chemistry. Um, and we're also going to look at the um, peptide link, peptide bond, uh, and see what a polypeptide is and how these chains of proteins can actually interact uh, by intermolecular forces. So we're going to start by looking at uh, what a protein is. So we say a protein is a polymer that's made up of amino acids. And um, so what we've got here is we've got two types of amino acids here. You've got this type and this type. Now it can be you can get those different types of amino acids, um, and you can join them together in a different way, in a multitude of different ways to form different types of proteins. So I've just picked two generic types here. So We've got an amino acid here and another amino acid here. Now, we would have a number of these, and this could be any value. That's why I put the letter N next to it as well. And effectively, if we react these two together, um, they join together in what we call a condensation reaction. And that means that water is actually um, produced as a product, as a, as a result of bringing two amino acids together. Um, and so that's what we've got here. Now, you can see... Um, I've actually colour coded all the different parts so you can see where the two have joined uh, and you can see that actually what's happened is the OH from the carboxylic acid group of one amino acid uh, actually uh, reacts with the or actually reacts with the hydrogen on the amine group of the other amino acid and these two will actually break off uh, and will obviously form water. So that is effectively what's happened. Uh, and this carbon here will then bond with the nitrogen there and we get this set up here. Now this bit of the protein is called a peptide link. So I'm gonna write that just here, just so we know what that is. So peptide link. And if we have a lot of these, as you would expect in a protein, you'd have a lot of these joined together. We've got that again, we've got that letter N there to symbolize that we'd have a lot of these uh, joined together, we call it a polypeptide. Again, the word poly meaning more than one, uh, and uh, peptide is obviously the link that's in between there. So we can describe uh, proteins as polypeptides. So they'll join together, and as a result, we'll actually produce water as well. Now, for every time we have this, we actually produce two lots of water. So we produce water that's been uh, released here when we have um, the peptide link that's been joined together. And obviously we have it where we've lost the OH group on the end here and the H here. So actually for every one of these, we produce two lots of water. And obviously depending on the number of these polymer chains that we've actually made will depend on um, what multiplier we have in terms of the number. We always have, uh, for every one of these reactions, we always produce two lots of water. So hence why we call it a condensation reaction. Now we can go backwards and you can take your uh, your protein and you can break it back up into amino acids. Um, now we call this hydrolysis. This is the uh, breaking up of a of our amino acids and we can either use acid hydrolysis and we can use really strong, uh, really concentrated um, hydrochloric acids, sort of about five to seven molar uh, hydrochloric acid under reflux conditions. Uh, and if you give it a, um, a decent length of time, so maybe between 12 and 24 hours, and um, this reaction can actually um, proceed. You can break up your uh, protein and you can turn it back into amino acids. And you can do the same as well with uh, base hydrolysis. Um, the only difference is, is that actually instead of forming your two amino acids, uh, like you can see here, instead what we effectively get is depending on the base that we've used, which would be something like sodium hydroxide, for example, uh, instead of the proton on the end of your carboxylic acids, you have a sodium ion that hangs on to the end of there and it bonds ionically with your, um, with your amino acid. So effectively what we form is a salt version of the amino acid. So this is effectively um, how we can interact or what we can do with amino acids to make proteins and backwards. And you are expected to know this as well and you are expected to be able to uh, draw down and write down reactions as well. So make sure you be able to do that. Okay. And, and the other bit as well is obviously these is just this is just one chain. Now, uh, amino acids, uh, sorry, proteins can be really complex and really long molecules, and they can twist and turn. And we'll come on to the structures in a minute. Um, but obviously, these um, 
polymer chains can actually join together. They can interact with each other within the structure that they form. Uh, and they can interact what we call via a hydrogen bond. Uh, and I've just got a section of the amino acid here, or the polymer chain, sorry, the protein here. And I've got one uh, chain there and one chain there. And it's just to show you where the, um, where the hydrogen bonding can occur. Now, hydrogen bonding can only occur between um, hydrogen, obviously, and nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So you can see here that we have a nitrogen with a hydrogen here, and you can have an interaction between the hydrogen on the amine group, on the amine part here, and the oxygen on the carboxyl part on another molecule. Uh, and that is effectively a hydrogen bond. This is what keeps this, um, this, these two chains uh, held together. Now, like I said before, amino acids are generally, uh, sorry, proteins are generally very long molecules, and they can twist into different shapes. And they can actually um, twist into a particular shape and are held in that shape uh, via uh, hydrogen bonding. And we can weaken that as well, either by um, adding heat to it uh, or you can add chemicals to it. And that can destroy that structure. So a classic example is, for example, um, clothing. So clothing such as wool, for example, uh, will have is actually a helical structure um, in terms of the protein that makes the wool. Um, now, if you want to try to flatten out them fibres, uh, you can use an iron to heat the fibres up. That weakens the intermolecular forces between them and flattens them out as a as a flat chain instead of all uh, coiled up and held together with hydrogen bonds. So this just brings us on to our protein structures. Now, uh, in chemistry, you just need to know the first three, um, but there are more, like I say. So um, there's actually four of them. So we're just going to look at the first ones. We call this a primary protein structure. Uh, a primary protein structure is basically the sequence of amino acids. So, for example, we have a glycine, alanine, valine, etc., uh, and we're going to go along like that, and that joins them together to form our uh, polymer chain. Uh, now, we call that a primary structure, but we can kind of zoom further out, uh, and we can also have a particular shape. So, these things can align themselves in a very particular way. So, you can either have something like a pleated shape, as you can see here, so they can zigzag up and down, uh, or they can be like a helical shape, like an alpha helix. Uh, which is symbolized in this shape here. We call the shape of the actual chain a, um, a uh, secondary um, or yeah, secondary structure. And the last one is called a tertiary structure, which is the third one here. Uh, and this is basically where the chain can get that long that it can actually loop back onto itself uh, and it's held in position by these weak uh, intermolecular forces, the hydrogen bonds. So you can see here that we may have a helical shape but you'd see it kind of double backs on itself and you may get a small interaction. So for example here, you may get an interaction there which would be a hydrogen bond. So I'll just quickly write that on there just to show you. So just be aware that you do get these interactions between and within chains and it holds it into particular places. Um, and just be aware about this, especially this reaction here, that's very, very important, um, especially in protein synthesis as well. Okay, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.